today I'm here casting We Are Extremely Bad A versus Ugly Drug Frogs or just Wubba versus UDF. Um, yeah, so maps are going to be Cash, Temple, and Sand. I'm gonna announce this real quick. Yeah, okay, so, uh, I don't have a pro caster, so I'm still casting this and I should probably just leave that Discord call. But yeah, we will be getting into this, uh, random bugs still not fixed, but yeah. And we will be playing video games. So, Overgrown. Alright, so this is a nice friendly bug that is not game breaking at all. Uh, the random map chooser. Sand. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so we will be getting into this. We actually got pretty good luck. Second try, got one the map. So maps are cash. Who picked temple? Uh, I'm guessing you did pick temple. Let's. Nope. Weba picked temple. So Weba did pick temple. This is the map pick. They're hoping to get off a good start in the first competitive game ever in terms of as a team. We're extremely bad. A is such a good. Okay. So, just, so this game will be starting, and Weba on the CT side, UDF on the T side. Um, for those who don't know, AFD Worst is top, AFD Salat is Chief Odenwald, and Galash. I cannot speak John Dutch. I have no clue who that is. Alright, so we will see a B smoke coming out for UDF. That is actually a good smoke. They are sending four nades towards Suns. That's kind of actually a waste. They should probably send towards middle. But it will be Weba instantly playing on this retake. Null getting naded down to 13 HP. That is huge nade so far. And UDF. And. Oh, sorry. Yeah, UDF already going to be playing on this post plant. Mystic will take down. Uh, Odenwald and Galash will get taken out by Katsuki. Phoenix now pushing on the side gets a double, and that will be relinquish, I think, with a triple. Also, I don't know. Okay, AFD Galash is Maja Wusel. Uh, and. So yeah, big. So okay, that's much. Of it, so that makes things simpler. So a nice pistol round. The really important thing that they did there was that Weba instantly, as soon as the bomb was planted, they took positions towards mid. A lot of teams wait way too long on their tempo retake, and that essentially they just basically they don't really take a forward position. As soon as you see the B rush, most teams it's a very strong idea to basically push towards mid to take that control. And meanwhile, anti-eco, I don't play CSGO with the triple. I... Who is I don't play CSGO? Is that, wait, is that Gabe? Or... Whistle. Oh, that's Whistle. Okay. Alright, so, yay. That's... Okay. Yay. Name changes are confusing. So we will see Usul pushing out of the site. Maja Whistle instantly with the takedown. That is a huge nade, actually, if Maja Whistle didn't already die. And it's just a B push. So, Weba instantly with a flank Kitsuki. Gonna be flanking Thi. And actually, Charmander will steal their kill. But it will be top and Nullfrock. Probably the two blessed best players on on UDF to, for this clutch. So, Nullfrock does get wall banged down, but top is on the B side. He is low on HP. He can definitely get actually wall banged to death, but he will take that fight with Charmander, but Charmander wins it. Charmander with a triple. Gonna win this round. 
for the side of Webeth. This is their map pick, and they are showing it. Dog attacking me. So now, UDF losing their first gun round, and I don't know how Top got that flank, but yeah. That is a pretty decent beast mode. Actually, no, it's not. It's totally wrong. But at least it will give the impression that it's going towards me, but it's not. It is a bridge rush, and Phoenix with a sniper here looking to do anything. But no, it will be Usul throwing a nade. But that nade actually does kill one player. You should buy a body armor, but Nolf Rush with a double. Two on two. Again, Nolf Rush and Top. Top just coming in from bridge room. He is probably the, without doubt, the strongest player on the side of Weba. But Nolf Rush gets one. Katsuki now left. And they're going to be falling back without taking any sort of damage, still one on two. And they're getting a push from both sides. They have to take down top right now, but top wins that duel easily. So now that round, the issue is even though Usul and Phoenix did a great job, what happened was the mid players, they actually, in this case, in that kind of case, what you do is actually you want to be falling back to the A-Tag and playing this kind of angle right here and just take down that player. But instead what they did was they pushed Bridge Room into five guns. And pushing against five guns is not fun. Yeah. Especially when the case is they're ready for that push. But we will see Usul and Phoenix, that pretty iconic duo, playing towards under. Both of them get a kill, and Charmander and Mystic will be getting kills towards Bridge Room. But at the same time, Top is in Bridge Room, and he doesn't like that. He's going to get that double kill in a one on three on 27 HP, though. That nade missed, but he's going to be pre-fired, Goosel is going to be pre-fired, Phoenix is going to get it! And the last player is Mystic Cat! Mystic Cat on 9 HP! Everyone dies! Empty. That was a really nice try from top, almost with the ace clutch, and if it did, I would have freaked out. And in effect, he did get the ace clutch. Except, the issue is they didn't win the round. That smoke actually a good one this time. They are actually going for a lot of bridge control as of late. That's a good- th Those are some good B smokes because it actually is limiting the information a fair bit. There are mid players, although they realize that it is a B push. However, the B, it's actually- They're going very slow. They're not planning the bomb, which is a huge issue. It's buying time for the side of Webba to rotate. UDF, their Temple D side having some mistakes in it, really just getting kind of carried. But, at the same time, we will see Top, we will see Odin getting kills. And now, three on five. Nullfrosh getting the kill on Mystic. And Phoenix now left with Charmander. Phoenix is gonna push on this like gets taken out by Thee. And now we will see Odin with the easy shot on Charmander towards mid. That's two for the T half for UDF. So not a terrible T half by any means. Two rounds is actually pretty typical of a standard T half, although it definitely could have gone more. Again, top plane fairly well. But now Weba. This is their chance. If they win this piss round, this map is almost certainly going to go to them. Especially considering how strong they've looked on Temple so far. They've had good team play and good coordination. Albeit, uh, they have been getting out aimed by the side of, uh, by the side of Weba. They will throw no smokes, interestingly. That's a good, that B rush, no, that B rush name missed. However, it will be the bomb plan. Interesting, they're having five player, four players on the site. Only Phoenix and Usul are towards mid. Which means that if that player pushes out tons, they could actually just push the player tons and get that free kill, get the man advantage as well as take forward positioning. But instead, they're not. Nalfrosh is on the flank. He's doing a lot of pot shots towards Phoenix and the Usul, both of which are low towards middle. But Mystic will get the Digo kill, and Charmander gets the kill on the tunnels players. They are pushing through tunnels, which is the issue because they've stacked tunnels. And now, top left, 25 HP. And he's probably going to save this. 13 seconds left, unless he's either going for exits or saving. If he can force any bomb deaths, that would be good. But he gets the wall bang kill on Fallen Charmander. And now, Top on 20 HP is going to take that fight with Phoenix. Actually, he gets the exit too. It's Top with some nice exits. That's actually kind of important. Because now, this means Top going 11 to 5. Kind of hard carry. Okay, really hard carrying. Uh, top will be getting now those exits mean that more than likely he's actually able to buy a gun on the CT side and still have money for the next round, or at least get like an SMG or buy a Deagle, which may not be huge, but it gives all that slightly more chance to win the round. 
So we will see Phoenix instantly pushing under. And let's look at what UDF do. They run four towards under. They get that gun out of their hands. It is an SMG, but it's still a gun. Top did not actually buy with all those kills, but he does have half HP. And it's man advantage for the side of UDF, although I don't think they'll be able to do anything with this. Glash Cocoon did buy, however, he's getting wall banged, and that hurts. So now, it will be top pushing towards mid. He can do damage here. Definitely. Useful playing towards mid, though, gets the double with that AK. If he, he could get caught out, except he's not. His teammates are going to back him up, missed a cat with that kill. And now, 2v4. One of them does have an SMG Galosh. Uh, he should get exits with that more than anything. Because exits mean that you're actually going to be able to afford your gun next round. So, Mystic will be pushing the right here. And if he can get anything with this Deagle, that'd be huge. But at the same time, no, it's not happening. Mystic with the kill. That one shot would have killed Mystic there because of the Deagle's damage at close range. Deagle on has quite a fair amount of damage drop off so at close range it's actually very underrated that's where it shines as a gun but now it's a two it's six two up for Weba. it's the first gun round of this half udf are going to have to be pulling off something and at the same time that is something top with the kill on charmander and the insane damage on usul usul being dropped to a third of his health and, but at the same time, Phoenix, he pushes through tons, and he's not letting them have any. Maja and Chief get taken down. We will see Top getting the kill, but Nalfrosh pushing through tons gets picked by Phoenix. Phoenix wants his team to win. This is Top with the kill, but he gets flanked by Phoenix. Phoenix could go for the ace. But at the same time, Thee with the kill. It's 30 seconds left, and Thee, this is his first comp game ever. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to flick on his own. He wins it! That is a flick and a half for Thee. And he has the time to defuse. They're spamming Odin, but it doesn't matter. He's not gonna mess up this defuse. Top did everything he could with those three entries. And Phoenix did the 4k. But he couldn't get the fifth. Phoenix almost got the ace there, but it's not enough. UDF are still in this game. Uh, on the backs of Thea and Top, that is a good B rush nade. If that actually is how you should throw a B rush nade, but Top getting it instantly a pick towards under, and now it will be Phoenix once again getting double. Top with also a double. Phoenix is flanking, but it's not enough. Two on two. Thea and Maja, Fallen and Kazuki. Kazuki is low, which is actually very important because it means that they can get one shot by the NM4, but at the same time, it doesn't matter if Charmander's winning that duel. But T could get the flick right here. T with the flick again! What is this? Bad? He's showing up in his first comp game. Before this, he had one kill before this, but now he just wins two straight 1v2s. 11 HP and pulls off one of the most insane flicks. Thee is saving UDF. Maybe top getting the kills, but Thee is winning the rounds. And now we will see a sniper from Phoenix. They want to. Okay, Fallen takes down Thee. They don't have to worry about losing 1v2 now. But at the same time, it's not over yet. UDF are playing this CT side rather well. Mystic pushing towards under and that is actually gonna get caught out by the side of Maja he's gonna fall back actually that's great team play sets up top perfectly to get that spray down that's huge team play from top but at the same time Nalfrosh is gonna save him this team play now Phoenix is left with a sniper he's gonna snipe one he's full HP that means this M4 will have to hit him twice in the head or more Nalfrosh is also full HP but he's facing a sniper he can still get headshot through a wall or just get straight up headshot he probably has body armor considering they've won the last three rounds, but the bomb is Phoenix's favor. He's gonna grab an M4. He, he knows he's not gonna more than likely not get a sniper angle. But Null, looking to not give this map up just yet, he could catch Phoenix out right here. He should have he's not gonna have the trigger discipline, but at the same time, Null's gonna win that duel. Nice shots from Null. And he did play that well. If I was him, I probably, being that I saw Phoenix just going behind the boxes, I wouldn't have actually given away my position. I would have waited for him to get right here, and then he has to flick harder, as well, because he doesn't know where I am, and he's not prepared for it. 
Although, no, still playing that rather well, waiting for the bomb plant. He knows it doesn't matter if they get the money or not, because they're gonna win the round anyways. But at the same time, Top in mid gets the headshot on Phoenix, who is right now carrying the side of Weba. Top is going huge, 21 to 9. And he's a, definitely the best player on the side of UDF. Kitsuki gonna be playing the bomb, but at the same time, Thea is flanked. And Thea's in position, but at the same time, Odin will get the kill on the B-side player. Thea with the kill, and it's 6-6. Six, six. We're going to overtime, everybody. Top of the triple. And top going 22-9. to nine. That is insane. So th this will be the $8,000 round. For those of you who are not aware of competitive CBC, in this round, you get $8,000 a piece for each player. It does, basically in this round, your economy doesn't matter at all. You're just going for as much as humanly possible. All right. Often teams will actually buy snipers here because this is actually a really strong sniper angle right here because you can actually wallbang and get the headshots. And Phoenix is doing exactly that. Gets the sniper kill on one. Null will trade onto Mystic Cat. I believe that is towards Bridge, but Charmander is on the site that Nate could kill. Except, no, he's gonna dodge it. Usul will actually push towards under, gets the kill onto top, but does take quite a bit of damage. We will see, actually, Kitsugi trying to flank, but not working. It's now left to Usul on 8 HP, and Odin will end his dreams right there. 7 on 6, and, and UDF may have actually brought this back. Down 6-2 at one point. But... Now they're, they were down 6-2, to two, and they've brought it back 7-6 to six up. Weba, T-side was weak. Your CT side was where they want to win that round, but at the same time, they haven't. That mid-smoke is a terrible one. If anything, that's just going to make it look like you're doing a bridge fake. So, we will see the side of Weba just going for picks. They know they can take their time here, but at the same time, let's see how UDF plays this. This is a very old strat that not a lot of new teams know how to play anymore. That nade's gonna eat half of Phoenix's health, though. That's actually quite important, because now an AK can one-shot him, or an M4 can get body shots instead of headshots, or a bo headshot body shot, which is important. Even all this damage, it's enough to do a difference. It's It may not be significant, but it's like... I was talking about yesterday with Deagle Buys and Kevlar. Enough damage to be significant. They are going to be pushing bridge though. Usul is, er, sorry, that is Nullfrosh towards under that actually top. But we will see Nullfrosh getting a trade on bridge. Top though, getting a player late on to the under area. That is Katsuki. Usul and Charmander with the entries. So three on three. And let's see how they play this post pen. Charmander is on site. Mystic Cat is also there. Only Usul is on full health. Other two are on 20 HP, but Usul with a terribly timed reload. Top exploiting that. Top getting another. And Top could get a third right now. It could be the over. And it's over. UDF with the insane comeback on the backs of Top and the Cop G. I don't know how. Sorry about that mispronunciation. Um, they will win 8 6, and that is the comeback. And a half. Top going 25 to 10. Phoenix doing all he can for his team, the captain, trying to make it, trying to go legendary, but at the same time, that's not happening, it's legendary. I'm gonna make myself some too. Okay, it? so, yeah. now, it will be top going 25 to 10, 2.5 KD. That is so incredibly important. So Pito subbing in for Mystic Cat. Uh, Steven will be subbing in for Kitsuki. Top did insanely well. So now he will be going into cash. That cash is the UDF's map pick. Alright, yeah. Cash is UDF's map pick. Uh, we have to do the random scumming. So we have to do this temple. Okay. No. Okay. Just... 
no, okay, well, until it starts. Uh, yeah, guys, so, high pixel should fix the game, but other than that, we will be waiting until the game starts just so the server gets rid, rid of, like, it stops breaking. But, yeah, this has been incredible from the side of UDF. Yeah, for those who don't know, they basically made it so you're not allowed to pick the map anymore. This is like the P challenge days where you had to like <coughs> had two parties of exactly eight and then one player had to, like three players on each team had to nade themselves. Yeah, except it's not tedious at the time. Alright, let's So now, Weba versus UDF. Weba up against the ropes. They're gonna be going at Cash, which is UDF's map pick. Top, notably, Top Titanic, aka FD Worst, is one of the best B players of ca one of the best Cash B players in the world. Ike, he's up there with the likes of Joey and and, and like the other really really good players on B, like Joey, Zephy, etc. Joey is like, oh yay, let's go. Top is ridiculously good at B. And so UDF, I can see why they picked it, considering Top is strat calling for them. He's also quite competent in IGL. I know this from my time in ASB where I did IGL for them. He helped me with a lot of things. P2. Alright, come choose me. Are you And Pito's late to the parties. 20 second subs. <laughs> I swear if we have to do the randomizer again. So we actually will see Pito subbing out for Gubbipe. Gub as a player is quite a strong one. Although he's definitely not on the starting lineup of Weba. Pito is definitely a better player than him. But that's actually so unfortunate that Pito had to crash right there. The randomizer. So now, UDF on the T side, they, I, they definitely want to start CT, but at the same time, they're just going for a B rush. Let's see how Weba are playing their CT setup. Weba playing a 2-1-2, actually with that player being Z instead of Highway. So Z means that you get slightly more information, but it's much riskier. Not with the instant entry, not with the double entry. And that's the bomb site. They just totally steamrolled the side of Weba. They had no information whatsoever uh, up until they hit contact. So, now Phoenix and Charmander, they're going towards B main. They haven't actually been spotted or heard yet. But at the same time, the players have to be ready for it. They will actually be peaked by Top. Top playing the checker area is going to get taken down. He only does half HP damage to Phoenix. And But at the same time, Null with the third. Steven coming into the tree room, but he's going to get taken down by Chief. And all it's left is Charmander, Null takes him down, Null with a 4k, almost the ace, and that's huge. So the round goes to UDF, and really Weba, the issue with their CT is that... The issue with Weba on the CT side is that as a CT, you have to have some form of info. If you're, you're just taking a straight up 5 on 2, without being ready for it, you're kind of in the blind. You have to go for some kind of play. People make the mistake. Yes, you sometimes want to 
a lot of the time you want to play passive in all posi in most positions, but one position, you have to go for some form of info, even if it's just a basic forward peek into A main. Hey guys, there's nothing A main, get ready for B. But at the same time, it's a 5 on 5 retake, because UDF had pushed B, had pushed A, and Weba went for the B stack, just going for the gamble, trying to get any sort of gun. Now they ha will have pistols on the retake, and 5v5 pistol retake is not as bad as people would like would like to think. Uh, it's actually kind of strong if you just group up and go for guns. However, at the same time, you're more than likely not going to win a five on five retake with 20 seconds. But Chief getting dropped to two HP. Top is there to bail him out. Top is there to get the kills. Top getting dropped to half HP. Chief is on two HP, and he can get really. So now, Steven actually kills a player on the site with that SMG. That's huge because now that actually pays for the SMG. And we will see C dying to the bomb as well. So that's two kills. Two guns out of their hands. Nice job from Steven there doing that damage. Very important. So. UDF. Going all on European ping, notably. We, they will be peeking mid against Phoenix, who is in Z. He will spot some stuff out. Let's see if he did it. He did do one body shot of damage, not significant. And the rest of the players are going for an A take. It's an A split that is a decent A, but a little bit early. However, Gub is actually alone on SMG towards the catwalk. He has to do something here. Phoenix, though, will get one kill on the rotate. He is playing truck. Gub will get taken down. Usul, though, with a kill on the lurker towards B. That is an Ulfrosh. And so one on two. Usul left. He's coming from A main. And he's on full HP. Top, 15 HP. Maja, half HP. Both of them are one-shottable by top with that AK. F. The highest health is Maja, and so what I would do here is I would actually play Maja in an angle that he can't get headshot, and that's exactly what he did. He takes down Usul, and the round goes to UDF. 3-0 up, and they are right now making Weba on their CT sides. Which we already saw previous. Yeah, so what? Uh, right, the issue right now is that they're really not rotating at all fast enough. They're just being caught with their pants down and they don't have any information. They're not getting it. And so we will see a highway smoke. This should give them something. They should know that they're actually UDF are setting up for a B take right now. Three players towards the B bomb site and another in position to rotate really quickly. But instead, they've banked it on A. Steven will actually spot them going towards highway, but Steven cannot get anything. There will be the one kill on Phoenix. That is towards A? Oh no, no, it's towards B, sorry. So we will see actually UDF as soon as they get that player, their B player picked, and as soon as they pick that A player and Steven, they're actually going to rotate towards A, which is a nice mid round call. Usul, though, is towards Squeaky. He's going to get one, could get another, but not happening. Now, top is low, it's a three on two which is definitely an advantage UDF, especially in this post spot. However, the rotates are actually in position. Phoenix is going to be coming from truck. The other player is going to be coming from BMA, and Phoenix is going to catch one out. That's huge. That's huge team play. They were not ready for truck, and that's a mistake by the side of UDF. But at the same time, somehow Charmander gets passed off, and I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Again. At the start was good team play, but at the end they just, yeah, they just did not hit. They got out aimed by UDF. UDF were playing insanely well on the cash T side. This may actually be probably their best map from the looks of things, because Top is a monster on it. And it may not look that way with him going only five to one, but his IGLing is some is an he's an insane cash IGL, and their CT sides are even better. So we will see the squeaky push. Uh, yeah, they could catch these eight main players off guard. Except they're not going to. They're going to be pushing mid. What is this? What is this round? The, the teams have switched positions. Now the CT is attacking. Top going to be caught out. But at the same time, he gets one. Nolv is there to help, but Steven takes him down before he can do anything. Three on four. But I don't believe that was the bomb. Actually, no. The bomb was dropped. The CTs and teams totally switched positions. 
So Weba, they know their conventional CC setups aren't working, so they're just gonna push. At the same time, Steven getting a kill towards B main. One player is pushing heaven, that is Chief. But at the same time, Gabai getting the kill. That's his first kill of actually, I believe in all of competitive CVC. And we will see Phoenix with the last kill on the towards heaven. All right, so now, 1-4 Weba are hoping for a 2-4 half right here. It's, well, obviously they're hoping to win it every round, but that's not happening. So yeah, 2-4 half is actually definitely doable on their T side because they could be a better T side team on this map. I'm not sure. They will have guns, and I think they're actually playing conventionally this time. UDF not looking to get caught off guard again by getting pushed by five CTs. And it looks like it's going to be a straight up mid tank. All five players for UDF are going to be pushing towards highway. Phoenix instantly spots this. Usul, or that is Steven, sorry, is, should instantly fall back. That's a good nade. That will hit some players. Yeah, actually hits top for half HP and all for 20. But Steven stuck in truck. Has to have his teammates to back him up. He's playing this correctly. Steven is, is playing this very well, actually. He does not want to get picked here. If he gets picked here, this round is over. Because Steven is the only player actually coming from CT. This is... Steven is the lynch pitch in the strategy. Gub pipe, while getting taken down, is not as important a skill as Steven. And Thee knows this. Thee knows. But at the same time, Steven, with the perfect time, is going to catch the off guard. But he will get taken down by Odin. But that could be enough time. But Charmander, though, on the side, gets taken down by Nullfrosh. And at that time, it's just... Weba didn't hit their shots. Steven was the important linchpin in that strat in the retake, and he did get one kill, but that's not enough in that position. So now, UDF winning 5-1. They just have to win two rounds, and from the comeback on Temple, down 6-2, winning six straight, winning 8-6, they could take this map 7-1 if they win this pistol round. So... Firstly, we will see, it looks like a B take for Weba, or A take, sorry, I'm getting say eight names mixed up, Usul will get the kill onto Nullfars, this is actually perfect entries, they're not dying, and that's huge, none of them take casualties, which is insanely important, there are, the health is not great on Phoenix, but Phoenix is playing in a spot that the health doesn't actually very much matter, he's gonna be moving, which is bad, because he shouldn't take this fight, He's gonna actually get taken down, but he does have the information. We will see Charmander pushing through, takes down the A main player, which is huge. And Steven takes down top towards truck after top gets that kill. So now, 5 2. Weba. Sorry, UDF still in the driving seat. Weba just are going to be going for their T-side play. Now, it's a full mid push from UDF, and if any of them actually have, like, decently high sounds, they're gonna hear these footsteps, because, yeah, I heard him as a caster running 21% volume. Um, they're actually all gonna be flanking from a main. Now, it's a 5 on 5 pistol retake, and I talked about these earlier. They actually can be strong, but at the same time, Phoenix is playing a very smart angle. That is this angle a pistol does not want to face. And Gub will get the one kill on the A main player, Phoenix with the last, and Phoenix with the third. So now, Phoenix with the going 10 to 6, double that of the next closest player, which is Steven, which is going 5 to 5. Whereas at the same time, it's a little bit more distributed for the side of UDF, with both Null and Top getting 8, and Maldra getting 5, Chief getting 4, he getting 3. So now, So now, it will be Weba looking for some sort of A play. They're running three towards A and one player towards boost, actually taking mid control. And what we, let's look at UDF's setup. They're having nothing B. They're playing a gamble stack A. They have no information A though. And there's no sounds. This is very smart by Weba. As a T, you don't want to make any unnecessary noise. It's just that much more information. They will, br they will break squeaky and it's a five on five. They're walking to stack, but Phoenix still gets one pick. And they're gonna be rotating towards B. They heard the amount of guns on A. They see the amount of players. They know it's an A stack. They're rotating towards B. And UDF aren't going to be rotating at all. So it's gonna be a four and four post plant. 
but the rotations are going to be insanely long. That's easily 10 seconds wasted. 10 seconds wasted or more, depending on how long of a route they're taking. For example, he's taking squeaky route, and he's going to be wasting time going there, checking that. They already killed the player speed. They don't need to be doing that. So, now, we will see one kill towards CT. Steven will get this info that there's two players CT. That is important, because now they know they're going to be coming from Heaven and Tree, but there's still two players left to be accounted for. Gub will get the one kill on the Heaven player, but at the same time, Top is coming into the site. Phoenix in a one on two back site. 14 seconds left. That nade's going to kill him. Except it's not. He's going... Uh, he's going to lose. And it will be UDF taking it. Four seconds left. And that almost got too close for comfort for UDF. It may have been a clean retake. But the amount of time that they spent was huge. Also by Kevlar. Hint. Hint. You shouldn't be having nade deaths like that in a post plant. Having a player die... It's just... Yeah. So now, 6-3 up. UDF's looking to take the series. It's series point. UDF playing, well, quite, well, really well, actually. They're playing really well. That retake, they did play that 5A stock. This time, they look like they're just having one player anchor towards B, who's playing CT. This angle could catch them off guard. It's gonna be top, except he's gonna get a quick snipe by, by Phoenix. What a shot from Phoenix. That was insane. We will see, though, the truck players getting free pot shots on them. And that is not something you want to have happen. Phoenix now, gonna be grabbing the M4. Sniper served off its use, even though in that situation. Nine out of time times, Top gets that kill. Because that was just an insane, inhuman reaction from Steven, from Phoenix. Interestingly, we will see Maja on 6 HP. He's gonna be wall banging towards checkers and actually that gives the info for the that gives the knowing that the players back checkers that's huge and now the gonna be pushing out of the site Get, sets up no rush for the kill no rush for the second udf winning the round udf winning the game udf winning the series and that is gonna be a 2-0 weba from up 6-2 to losing 7-3 So, I thank you all for watching this game. I hope you enjoyed it. <sighs> yeah. Until next time, I'm Noto. I hope you tune in again. Peace.